Welcome to the T2 Hubcast. Join Martin, Dave, Spencer and guests as they discuss all things personal and professional development. The T2 Hubcast, brought to you by the People Performance People. So welcome to another T2 Hubcast. It's me, Martin Johnson. And today's topic uh, is a topic that I really feel passionate about. And I think it's probably one of the most underdeveloped, underutilized skills in the workplace. And it doesn't really matter whether you're listening to this and you're a leader or a manager, whether you're a salesperson or sales manager who ha- or, or whether you're a customer service representative. Um, if you have to speak in front of others, either in a small group or a, a mid to large size audience, and part of your role involves bringing something alive in the mind of other people, whether you're presenting in the morning, uh, the morning's leadership meeting, whether you're presenting to the board, whether you're doing a pitch to a customer as a salesperson, whatever it may be, the ability to speak with power and presence is incredibly important. But it's one of the things that people fear the most. You know, in a survey done uh, across many different countries, almost around the globe, of the top global fears, you know, in the top five in reverse order, five was death uh, or critical illness, four was heights, three was open water or closed spaces, two was an array of insects like spiders, snakes, bugs, creepy crawlies, bees, wasps, etc. But at number one, the number one global fear across, doesn't matter what, Uh, culture you are from, what background, what continent, the number one global fear was public speaking. More people would rather die than speak in public. And that goes to show that it is one of the most feared things to do. And even if it's in the workplace, in a meeting room, in front of eight colleagues that you already know really well and work with every day, it doesn't make it any easier for some. And therefore, what we do here at T2 is we we offer uh, a lot of development and courses and training on, on how to speak with power and presence, speaking and presenting with power and presence, because it's a really important skill. For some of you out there who have the confidence to do it, you're going to get something from this hubcast in terms of how to do it a little bit better or how to uh, consciously bring uh, some structure and some uh, and some power to it. For those of you who are terrified of it but have to do it as part of your role, then let's see if we can uh, make things a little bit easy for you. And if you can take some of these tips away, then I think uh, it'll be beneficial. So all, I mean, this 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 uh, area is huge, right? And we can spend we sometimes spend a whole day or two two days uh, teaching groups and going through a really interactive process on how they can speak. Uh, from a from a preparation perspective, from a content creation perspective, from a delivery perspective. But what I'm going to focus on this hubcast in the short time I've got with you is really what I call the three principles of presenting or speaking. Uh, so what are the three principles that go go into a fantastic presentation, talk, pitch, whatever it may be? Well, I'm going to start and I'm going to explain the three principles and I'm going to see if I can give you a couple of tips along the way. But if you have to speak in front of a group or in front of people, if you have to deliver a talk, a presentation, whatever it might be, always remember going forward that if you can try to incorporate the following three things that I share with you, then you stand a better chance of capturing your audience. Now, before I go into the three, one of the couple of uh, sort of a couple of other things I'll mention about speaking. And presenting. Some people ask me all the time, Martin, it it seems like it's effortless for you and for the guys there at T2. You must enjoy it. How do you do it? And and I guess the first thing I'd say is there's a couple of things. You have to know what you are talking about inside out. So the subject of what you are talking around, whether it's you're updating your, your department's figures for the quarter to the board, whether you are pitching your product or service to a would be customer. You have to genuinely know it inside out because nothing, nothing makes people more nervous or spoils a presentation more than people who are unsure. They feel underprepared. And if you're having to read off scripts, off cards, off 
copious amounts of slides with data and detail on it, then you do not know your subject matter well enough. So the first part of call is don't speak over about something you don't know too much about or make sure you prepare enough so you know enough about what you're speaking about. That's the first thing. The second thing is where you can, you have to try and feel or you have to genuinely feel passionate about what you're speaking about right? You have to genuinely be passionate about it because when you have passion and genuine belief in what you are speaking about, it oozes out in your demeanor, in your tone of voice, in your body language, in your, in your energy. And you know what? If you are presenting a transactional presentation of the, of the finance figures for the last quarter to the board, then at least get passionate about, you know, why it matters or, or what this means for the organization. Um, so, Two principles for me before we go into the three things I want to share with you today is know what you're talking about and be passionate about it. And if those two things are in place, then what I'm about to share with you is very, very easy. It's just the icing on the cake. Right. So the first principle of speaking with power and presence is it's got to carry a level of emotion. It's got to be emotional. And what I mean by this is you've got to touch people's hearts even with the most transactional of subjects, right? The best speakers, the best TED Talks, the, you know, the best people who, who are out there who, when they speak, you listen. It's because they have a level of emotion in what they are saying, right? Three things around emotion. Have energy. The more energetic you are, the more energy you put into what you do, it will, it will emotionally connect with others. Two, we talked about passion, if there's a passion and a rawness to what you are saying, it becomes believable. And number three, storytelling. If you want to capture people's emotion, don't get caught up in facts, details, frameworks, data, information, because it becomes very scientific and very boring very quickly. The greatest presenters and speakers are brilliant storytellers. They're great storytellers. They can bring a concept or an idea or a product or a service or something, a topic alive in the mind of the audience by telling stories that they can relate to. If you think about the best comedians out there, the best comedians tell stories and anecdotes and metaphors, right? And that's who you engage with and who you enjoy watching. Now, there's three types of story you can tell. So if you're going to inject principle one, i.e. emotion into your speaking, then you, you've you got to take people on a journey and there's three types of stories you can tell. The first one is called man in the hole. And a man in the hole story always starts with good fortune. So you start off on a high, whatever you're talking about, it's all rosy, it's all positive. You start in a really good optimistic place. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of your talk or presentation, you bring it down to ill fortune or you bring it down to challenges or you bring it down to the problem or to adversity. So you take the audience from positive, upbeat messages and a tone down into ill fortune or something that could be perceived as a challenge or negative or whatever it might be. But this is the beauty about this type of story. The man in the hole then at the end of your presentation or talk returns to positivity. Now, leaders master this in the workplace. If you've got a tough message to deliver to your to your team or performance-wise, right, if you want to rally them, don't steam in with the tough message. Neither should you end on the tough message. We've all heard the term the shit sandwich, right? Yes, there's some logic to it, but we want to start with good fortune and start looking at all the great things we're doing or what is positive and what we're achieving. We want to then hit our area to build on, but then we want to finish really positive. And you take people's emotions from high and optimistic through to the salient serious point, back to the positive end. And that's where you leave them. And that's called man in a hole. The second type of storytelling that you can deploy when speaking in front of a group is what I call boy meets girl or what we call boy meets girl. It's where you start off neither in good fortune or ill fortune, right? Or positive or negative. You start off on an even keel. It's just an everyday boy who's going about his business, right? You start off on an even keel and then slowly but surely as the talk progresses or as the as the as the presentation progresses, you get more positive and positive and positive till the boy meets girl and you finish on a romantic end. Now that's a, a more steady story to tell. If you want to build 
uh, the momentum throughout a presentation, start even keel, get your facts, data, information, nothing's really happening, but then really finish on a high. And that takes people's emotions on a spike towards the end of your presentation. The, the third type of story you can tell, so we've got man in a hole, start on good, positive vibes, down to ill fortune, negative or salient point, back up to positive. You've got boy meets girl, start even, get the facts, data, evidence, and the transactional stuff out the way, and then finish on a high. And the final story is the Cinderella story. I like to use this one when I'm delivering a 25-minute talk at conferences or when I'm when I've got a very short amount of time to take people on a journey and capture their attention, I like to deploy the Cinderella story. The Cinderella story is starting at the beginning with intensity and of a position of potential ill fortune. And what happens is you start in, you're capturing people's buying and emotion instantly because they are root, like the story Cinderella, they are rooting for you before from the beginning. You are the underdog, right? So you start there and then you slowly build and navigate your way through the challenges until you end up with the success on a high. Some of the best speakers I've ever witnessed master the Cinderella story, right? From rags to riches, from adversity to success. It's why explorers are great speakers, right? It's why people who have come back from adversity, ex-military guys who have suffered serious injuries in Afghanistan or Iraq, and how they've come through and how much of a success they are and an inspiration they are in the modern modern day. You know, there's hundreds of these stories, but they capture people's attention because the Cinderella story, it's like a great film. If if you're watching a film and from the outset, somewhat there is misfortune of, on somebody or somebody is struggling or somebody is the underdog, you are rooting for them for the rest of the film and it captures our emotion. So the first principle of speaking with power and presence, just to summarize, is you've got to inject a level of emotion into what you do, whether you're pitching a product or service, whether you're you know, presenting in the morning uh, you know, walk around, whether you're pitching to the board, whatever it might be, whether you're speaking at a conference, you have to be able to inject a level of emotion into what you do. And not only is that energy and passion because you fully believe in what you do and you know a lot about it, but consider where you can start storytelling. Where can you inject the man in the hole methodology or the boy meets girl or the Cinderella story? And where can you take people on a journey emotionally, which allows them to really connect and remember what you're saying? So that's the first principle. The second principle of speaking with power and presence for me is not only do you, you can't just get away with the emotional roller coaster. When people are presenting life stories or some of those military comebacks or the sporting achievements, they can get away with it being entirely storytelling and emotional, right? But in most situations in the workplace or in our professional life, we have to give our audience a little bit more than that. So the second principle is novel. Always remember that as well as emotional, we've got to deliver something novel, which means that you have to teach them something new right? Content is important. Delivery is everything, as we know, but you have to teach people something new. Certainly, if you are, you know, trying to develop people or you're trying to convince um, a, a board to, to buy into an idea or you're trying to sell a product or service, teach me something new, right? So in the novel area, you've got three options here. You can, you can, you can apply some type of invention, which is Here's something entirely new that I'm going to now present to you. You have to potentially tie in some innovation. Here's an alternative or tie in that something has changed. So here's some information that you didn't know prior. Either way, in my talk, in my presentation, in my pitch, whatever it might be, I need to inc involve something which is novel. I need to I need to make it intriguing enough so you can learn something new. The emotion is great. I want to capture you with the emotional side of things and bring stuff alive with stories. But when all said and done, there's got to be some novel stuff in there as well. It adds credibility. And, you know, people want, if they're going to listen to you for a period of time, they want to take something away. And quite often for many people, if they're an analytical thinker, um, they'll want some substance. And they, they'll do, they don't just want the, what they'll call the fluffy emotional side, right, which are most human beings relate to. They'll want something novel. Teach me something new. And that's the second principle 
of speaking with power and presence. Now, the third principle of speaking with power and presence for this hubcast. So we've 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 incorporated some stories and energy and passion, and we're bringing things alive. We've got one or two nuggets in there, which is teaching some somebody something new, something alternative, or something's changed, and you need to inform them inform them of that. But the third principle is as equally important. It's you've got to make it memorable. Nobody truly is inspired by somebody standing up in a room and talking through 20 slides, right? Nobody is truly inspired by anybody standing behind a lectern with their hands in their pockets or with their hands on the lectern and talking in a monotone voice for 20 minutes or half an hour, right? It, that, that, that's the norm, right? Nobody is inspired by people standing up and sheerly passing information data um, or whatever it might be. So you've got to make it memorable. And hopefully you've gone some way if you've injected some emotion and something novel into, into your talk or, or presentation, you know, or pitch. That's going a long way, but you need to make it memorable. And what memorable people do is they present content, content in ways you have never seen or that you are unlikely to forget again, right? How do presenters do this or how can you do this without without it being inappropriate? But you've got to you've got to play with this. You've got to make it memorable, do something different. Quite often people will use visuals. So instead of just content on slides, they will use flip chart or they will use post-it notes or they will use something, play a video or do something that presents the content in a visually different way. Consider how you can do that. They use props. You know, physical props. One of the best talks I've ever uh, witnessed and enjoyed live was a, a speaker that I I had on my T2 Talks conference uh, last year, uh, Steve Judge. Steve Judge is a two-time uh, paratriathlete um, and he's now a motivational, inspirational speaker, but his story is remarkable. You know, Steve was an everyday guy um, who one day was involved in a horrific car crash, which he thought he would never walk again. He crushed his legs and he thought he would never walk again. And um, and actually, you know, his, his strength and his character and his drive led him to not only walk again, but to do some amazing things and become a two-time world champion paratriathlete. Now, you know, if, if, if you if you do one thing after this, check Steve out on, on YouTube. Uh, you'll find him on YouTube. It's Steve Judge. But one of the things he did in his presentation is he used props throughout the entire presentation. And it was remarkable to see. He used things like a, a, a stick to snap to make the point of how badly his leg was injured. And hearing that echo within the audience at the moment he told us of his injuries – it was spine tingling. It was chilling. You know, it was it was the Cinderella story. We were rooting for him, and we were we were only imagining what he was going through. You know, he used a bucket to chuck it in. He um, he used his medals that he won to to celebrate his you know when he when he crossed the line to become a two time paratri. He used props incredibly intelligently throughout the whole talk, and it made it memorable. And that's what a lot of people do. Um, We've talked about video and audio. Rather than it just be visuals or, or presentation or yourself or whatever it might be, use video and audio. In the modern day world, we can get very, very creative with our presentations and the way we talk. Um, triggers and wow moments. Now, this is something I teach uh, in, in our courses when we teach speakers to speak with power and presence. But if you're not careful when you're talking or presenting, either in the workplace, if you do a pitch, if you do a conference talk, whatever it might be, um, you, your salient points and your key points can get lost in translation. If you do not use what we call triggers and wow moments, i.e. a trigger is to set up a really key point in your talk or pitch, and the wow moment is then your salient point. If you don't use a trigger and hit it with a wow moment, you can often, we find this a lot, speakers can often deliver something impactful, but it's sheerly lost on the audience because it's just either delivered too quickly or in a monotone of, of dialogue. So a trigger is how you set up a series, a salient point. So let me give you an example of a trigger I use when I'm speaking at conferences. So I'm giving it my emotional best. I'm storytelling. 
I'm expressive, I'm walking up and down, I'm using body language, I'm including bits of novel information in there. Um, I don't use detailed slides. I have visuals that bring stuff alive, but I'm highly animated on the stage. But when I want to deliver a trigger and a wow moment, I slow down and I quieten my voice. I, I become more quiet because I'm quite a loud person. So my opposite impact is when I become quiet. And then what I do is I slow it right down. And I say a trigger along the lines of this. And if there's anything you take from my talk this evening, let it be this and pause. That is a trigger because now the audience are well aware that what I'm about to say is important to me and I believe it's important to them. And after a short pause, I will hit them with my wow moments, with my wow moment. You know, great leaders always focus on what they want to achieve and make it instructional, and they never focus on what they want people to avoid. Quiet. Now, that is a trigger and a wow moment. It's the ability to set up a salient point, right, and then hit them with that point so they are more likely to retain that piece of information. If you're in a meeting and you're a leader or manager listening to this, right, If you're in a meeting and you're hitting your people with a fire hose of information in a presentation or a talk or or whatever it is, right, you only get the chance to do this once, but this is a great way to hit this. You can say as a trigger to your your team members, listen, I want you to write this down. When you say those words, you watch the entire room simultaneously pick up a pen. Listen, and I want you to write this down. When we write stuff down, we are three times more likely to retain it. When you say, and I want you to write this down, whatever comes next has to be important, right? Moving forward, we are all going to commit to delivering this project by X or whatever it might be. And I'm freestyling now, so but you get the point, right? Triggers and wow moments uh, make your presentation memorable because they allow you to drive and feed the salient points and the key things you want your audience to take away. Don't allow them to become lost in translation or in a monologue of information through a nervous presentation. And the final thing I'll say, if you want to make your presentation memorable or your talk memorable, practice, you know, the power of repetition. I talk about it in my book. The power of repetition is the number one that se- thing that separates great spe- or fantastic speakers from average speakers. People think that if I rock up at a conference or you know, record a video that I just have this uncanny knack of rocking up and I can just go off the off the cuff and 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 wow the audience. Now, do you know what? With my experience now over the years, I could probably give that a go. But make no mistake about it. I have absolutely planned and delivered that presentation or that kind of presentation tenfold, sometimes a hundred times, right? So much so that I am on autopilot from a content perspective and I can now focus on all the things I'm talking to you about today, the emotional, the delivery, the storytelling, the body language, right? The, the, the triggers and wow moments I want to get across. So practice and repetition is key. You know, I mentioned Steve Judge earlier on. Uh, I can think of some of the other fantastic speakers we've had at T2 Talks. They deliver those type of presentations and those talks every week, 10 to 15 times over. And that is why they are so good at them. So don't rock up on that Friday board meeting or or to that sales pitch without giving it a dry run at least a dozen times. Whether it's on the car, in the car, on the way home from work, on the way to work, whether it's in front of your loved ones at home, your wife, your husband, whoever it might be, whether it's just in your pacing up and down in your meeting room, in your office, just talking to a wall, just getting used to the format and the delivery and how you're going to bring the stories alive. Fantastic presenters practice and through the power of repetition, they make it memorable. So, 23 minutes into the Hubcast, I could talk to you all day about this and you can probably sense the the passion and the the, uh, enthusiasm in my voice when I talk about this, but it's what separates the great speakers from the average. But let me recap what 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 I've shared with you. Two things to think about. If you're going to speak in front of a group, if you're going to command an audience, if you're going to wow the board, if you're going to make that sale on that presentation, you know, even if you're just going to leave your team members leaving a room feeling motivated and, and engaged, 
then you've got to genuinely know what you're talking about from a knowledge and content perspective. You've got to take time to know what you are talking about. You've also got to be genuinely passionate about what you're talking around. And if it's a transactional thing that you're presenting, get passionate about the peripherals or the outcome or what this means for each and every one of us or the business. That's what you can get passionate about. But either way, you've got to have those two things. Then you've got to think about incorporating the three principles. Number one, emotion. The emotional side of what you do has to have energy, passion, but you've got a story tell. Think about the three types of story that you want to incorporate into your talk. Whatever's situationally relevant, the man in the hole, starting positive, hitting a serious negative or a salient point, finishing on a high and a positive. How the, the man gets in the hole, the man gets out the hole. Number two, boy meets girl. Start very, very, you know, ordinary. Nothing's really happening. It's an everyday thing. Here's all the data, everything I need to get through, but I'm going to finish on a real high and spike people's emotions at the end. And think about the third type of story, my favorite, the Cinderella story. Start with ill fortune, with um, the underdog story, with whatever it might be. And as long as you slowly progress to an to a fantastic end and a real spike in positivity, then you can leave your people feeling really engaged and motivated. Number two, you've got to be novel, right? You've got to, in, or you've got to incorporate a level of novel information into your talk or presentation. People want to, if they're going to give up their time and they want to take something away, they've got to, you've got to teach them something new, right? You've got to hear something entirely new. Here's an alternative way to doing something that we do at present or something has changed and I need to inform you of it. That is teaching somebody something different or new. And that's what we would class as incorporating some something novel into your talk or presentation. And finally, memorable. People who present content in ways that you, that you will never forget will always stay with you. Use visual props uh, or visuals. Use props. Use um, video and audio. Don't miss the opportunity to incorporate some of that. Triggers and wow moments. Remember what I've said about triggers. Don't allow your salient points to be lost in translation. If you want people to, to remember you and remember what you've said, make sure you set up your point uh, with, with, a, with a trigger, i.e., listen, I want you to write this down. Or if there's anything you take from this meeting this morning, let it be this. They are examples of fantastic triggers. In sales pitches, the sales people amongst us can set up triggers such as, and you know what, if there's one thing that our customers love about us, it is, that's the trigger. And then you better back it up with a wow moment. But you've got to think ahead about which ones you can use to really inject something memorable into your presentation or pitch. And then of course, wow moments, you've got to follow it up with the salient point. Finally, repetition. Always, always you know, whenever I've got a big conference talk to do or I'm building up to a big presentation or whatever it might be, every morning that week before I deliver it in my car, my 40-minute commute, I deliver the presentation through the windscreen with the radio off with power and presence. Many a time have I pulled up at the traffic lights, giving it both barrels for my presentation and somebody is in the traffic next to me looking at me like I'm absolutely crazy, right? I just smile and carry on. I repeat the same exercise on the way home. If you think about that, five days over, that means that I have delivered that presentation from start to finish in a safe environment 10 times before I get on that stage. And that is what you need to try and consider, no matter how big or small the opportunity is. So that concludes my Hubcast. It's a few tips there on how to speak with power and presence, whether you're a salesperson, a manager, someone who speaks at conferences, someone who has to present to the investors, the shareholders, the board, whatever it might, or just your team on the Monday morning walk around, right? Use some of the principles, start simplifying it, um, and, and don't leave out, don't miss the opportunity to inject the three principles, emotional, novel, and, memorable, rem and memorable. So that concludes this Hubcast, and I hope you found it interesting, and I'll be back shortly with another T2 Hubcast. Thank you very much. Thank you.